A model steamboat named Edith, part 31, a live steam test on the bench. And the first thing to do, which I showed in the previous episode, is fill the tank with water. And it's good to see that the tank actually holds water, so now by using the hand pump, which is very clever on this engine, it's just a large ram in an extension tube mounted on the valve chest of the axle driven pump. So by moving this ram up and down, it transfers the water from the water tank into the boiler. And the ram has a peg on it, which engages a bayonet fitting on top of the tube, so that once you finish pumping the water, you can lock the ram in position. And with the ram securely locked in position, there's no chance of it coming out of the tube when the engine is running and the crankshaft driven pump is working. After a while it dawned on me that it would be a good idea to let the engine pump the water into the boiler. So temporarily I connected an air supply and let the engine do the work. With the water bypass valve on the tank open, the water is returned to the tank. And you can see how much is coming out. When I push the ramp as well, you can see that a lot of water comes back to the tank. But there's a good amount coming just from the crankshaft pump, more than enough to top up the boiler as the engine is running. I think it's time to put some more water in the tank because it's starting to suck air through the inlet to the pump. So it's looking good, everything's working. In the left hand side of the picture you can clearly see that the water gauge shows the boiler to be about a third full. So I think it's time to install the gas tank and this seems to be quite an easy operation. I've also added some more water to the tank and now I'm lighting the gas burner. My advice when using gas to fire a boiler is do not turn the heat up too far to start with. Put the heat on low, turn the pressure down. I think it's a good idea to heat the boiler slowly initially and that puts a good bit less stress on the copper boiler itself. While the boiler's slowly heating up, this is a good time to fill the displacement lubricator and generally lubricate the engine. I'm using steam oil for this job and I'm filling it right to the top. That way when I put the cap back in, a bit of oil is already pushed into the steam line before the displacement lubricator even starts displacing. This particular type of lubricator has an oil control valve and I would normally open this one full turn from fully closed. Once the boiler is getting nice and warm and is too hot to the touch, I turn up the heat. Because the gas tank sits in the tank of water, this stops the gas tank from chilling and the gas pressure remains more or less constant. With a gas tank like this sat on the bench, after a while it chills and the gas pressure drops and so does the heat. In this clip, using the copper extension pipe on my oil can, I'm oiling the big ends and the trunk guides of the engine. And now, once I open the steam valve, off it goes. Currently, there's not much pressure showing on the pressure gauge and the engine is running quite fast because the boat's on the bench and there's obviously no load on the propeller like there will be when it's in the water. The crankshaft driven pump is working perfectly because there's more water in the boiler than there was at the beginning. And now the pressure inside the boiler is really climbing fast. And by looking at the water gauge, as you can clearly see, the water is going even further up the glass. This is a great boiler. With the bypass valve fully closed and water being pumped into the boiler, it's even blowing off. I think it's time to turn the gas down. There's quite a lot of steam coming from the side of the boat and in front of the camera. This is because the condenser is not yet in the boat. I needed to check that the piping wasn't leaking and with the condenser in there, I wouldn't have been able to see it. The good news is the piping isn't leaking, but for the moment, there's a silicone rubber pipe taking the exhaust out of the boat into a plastic dish at the side of the bench. This steam test shows me that every part of the boat is working well and the safety valve extension pipe is blowing off quite nicely and it's evacuating all the excess pressure from the boiler so I would say that this steam plant is going to power this boat with ease. I'm curious to see how long the engine will run once the gas is turned off. So I've turned off the gas with the valve on top of the canister as you've just seen and now I'm opening the bypass valve to return all the water to the tank. The engine is still running at a good speed despite not having a fire in the boiler. And this is the plastic dish that I mentioned which is collecting the exhaust steam and the oil residue. It's starting to run down now, the engine's getting a lot slower, but there's hardly any pressure showing on the water gauge. The crankshaft pump continues to pump the water, the bypass valve is fully open, and as you can see it's just been returned to the tank. Now the boiler pressure is very low indeed, I don't know how the engine's managing to keep going. And as you can see, 
part of the cycle slows down, and that's the part of the cycle where the pump ram pulls water from the tank, down the piping, and back to the tank, down even more piping. And with absolutely no pressure showing on the pressure gauge on the boiler, the engine still continues to rotate. But that's about it. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.